Okay, uh, I think that's recording. Uh, this, I'm, I'm here looking, with I'll my look into friend. the lens there. I'll look, look into the lens. So it looks as though I'm talking. I think you've probably done this before, Nat. So <laughs> it's not your first time. Uh, so I was thinking the other day that uh, you we've been working together for 20 years. No, we haven't. Yes, we haven't. Um, look, look at the effect. <laughs> Look at the effect it's had on my hair. As a, you know, <laughs> the effect it's on like, your hair. You know, you have like a very stylish bit of grey, and I'm like Santa Claus's older brother. <laughs> but we're up, aren't we the same age? Oh, don't say that. That's <laughs> terrible. Oh, no, I think we are. Did I do I'm yoga or brother. something? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, think I think I'm, I'm 55. I'm 55. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm even older than you then. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm okay. um, I'm 58. You're 58. No, 58. Yeah, 58. I'm cut, and, uh, I'm cutting all of this out of the video. All of this is gone. It's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And people sometimes do say to me, "Have you dyed your hair?" I, I, there's a lovely writer called, called Tony Grounds, a TV writer, who used to say, "I'm not giving you a part till you admit that you, you dye your hair." And eventually, I got a gray a gray hair, and I sent it to him in the post. Did you get a part? Did you get I did get a part. Yeah, I did. <laughs> But um, no, I've, I've only ever dyed my hair when I was playing Henry VIII, when I dyed it re um, sort of red and my beard, yeah, yeah. sort of auburn red, yeah. Otherwise, I've, I've been very lucky on that. Front. But um, so we, a lot of the, I've met um, a lot of people who have driven across the country, especially in America, listening to the books. And I remember uh, what, it was very funny. Um, one mother came to me, I, I think it was, it was out of New York. I think it was New York. And she said, we drove from somewhere like Connecticut uh, to California and oh we God, listened yeah, to uh, Nathaniel all the way across. I think they, were, they got through four books uh, oh and they said everybody was very happy. And then she gave me a wink and I don't know what that <laughs> meant. I have no idea what she was saying, but the main thing was that uh, so many people, their association with the art and style books, is you because, and your voice because that's how they that's, that's very flattering I used, to, I used to think of stephen fry as uh, because of all of his um um harry potter things yeah and my kids when they were tiny listening to that i used to think, think of him like a nanny yeah yeah <laughs> you, know, true, you yeah. know you were fine if you could just put something on and they'd listen to it yeah and so well, that's very I, I think yeah for for artemis uh, that's you which and it's been so great that you've been able to uh, come back after the five or six year gap and that actually is the first question we have from Andrew Davis and Andrew wants to know Andrew um, Davis Andrew Davis do you know an Andrew he wrote, Davis? <laughs> he wrote Vanity Fair that I was in <laughs> you know, a different, um, different Andrew Davis, probably. It, could, it could be that is from uh, be, that's a Facebook question and he wants to know I hope this is not some kind of coded dig at you that is a genuine question is that how did it feel coming back to the series after so long and was it easy to find all those voices again? I know a lot of it was new voices, but... Well, um, that's a very good question, actually. It, it didn't feel like six years, because it, it feels like it's in my blood. So it, it, that, that's, um, that, that didn't matter. I think um, I was kind of surprised that I could still, I'm still allowed to do uh, my, my Artemis, my young Irishman yeah. um, voices, because you know, it's 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 very hard when you got when you got a, a, a deep voice like mine. It's quite a tough one to do, which yeah. is why the Fowl Twins brilliantly had Lord Bleedham Dry, oh. who you know, and Lord yeah, Bleedham Dry I, could do something I, between. I think of and, all the things you've done, I just it's not. It's, there's something wrong about laughing at your own work. You're not. Supposed <laughs> to, it's not proper. But when you do Teddy, I just crack up. Every Teddy time. bleed him dry. <laughs> yeah, it's because, <laughs> I, I, can, I do because I've met you. I'm imagining your face as well. And, uh, that, it's so but cool. it is quite tough actually because you, you you bled it in so much. There's that wonderful scene at the end of the first uh, twins book yeah. with him um, uh, uh, and um, foul twin number one. Yeah. What's his name? Miles. Miles. Thank you very yeah. much, Miles. Way. Um, and 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 they've got. And so it's it's that soft one. And then there's this one. Yeah. And if I'm not careful, after a while, my voice is going out there. And I really can't, I, 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 I feel ashamed that I haven't got enough youth to do miles properly. Oh, that um, sounds great. Can I ask you, when you're doing something like that, an interchange, do you do that all in one go or does it get layered in where you want um, It depends. If I love doing it all in one go, if I can. I mean, my problem is, and I sent you a little recording of, of a couple of pages of, of the beginning of the book today, 
Um, and you can hear how many mistakes I make. In fact, I didn't make that many on that bit um, because I've read it before a couple of times, obviously. But um, I'm dyslexic. Not badly, just classically dyslexic. So often what happens is I'll put a word in from a line below it or above it, or yeah. I'll start, a, say the word start with is, is strength, but because it's an S-T-R, I go street. Yeah. It makes no sense at all, you know. <laughs> he had the street to do that. No, <laughs> so, uh, often I'm, I, I jumble things up and it's very difficult to get um, a whole page without a mistake. I mean, they are rare. They are really rare for me. But the easiest way to do it is in, strangely, either really fast action, which you'd think would be even harder to get right, uh, or dialogue switching from one to the other. I'm Miles to his brother. Yeah. You know, Second like this, and then the next one you like this, and then the next one you like. And yeah. that, I mean, I just adore the challenge. I I really love the challenge. So if I can, I try and do it all in one sweep. Well, that's great. Uh, and it's very the autism, uh, or sorry, the dyslexia thing is very interesting because so I've met a surprising amount of actors who are dyslexic, and uh, they've, they've always made it that little bit harder for them going into a reading, for example. Yeah. If you were going into audition for something. You'd need mm. to get those pages a bit earlier when you just have a. Read. It is. It's very difficult. And if you've learned something uh, and you've learned it wrong, yeah. then you're scuppered <laughs> for quite a while. And it's like if I, if I read off your page when, you know, something you've written and I get, uh, I, I say it wrong initially, uh, the, the engineer, will, the producer will stop me and I'll have to do it again. And if I've Learned if, if I've sort of if I've done it in my head wrong the first time when I was reading it to myself out loud at home, and I've still done it wrong, it can take me five or six goes just to get that word right. Um, my 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 um, most my my uh, record I think is thirty two attempts. <laughs> Not on one of yours actually. <laughs> I was reading I was reading Robert Louis Stevenson's thing. Uh, God, what is it? It's, it's, it's um, Pleasure Island or Kidnapped or... No, Lost, no, uh, lost, King, lost um, Kingdoms or what it's called. But anyway, um, years ago, and I had to say the word Atlantean, which is easy, I can do it now. Yeah. But um, I could, and I could do it in rehearsal, but Atlantean was what came out every time. Every time. Atlantean, I said, no, sorry, sorry, I'll do it again. And then uh, Atlantean, oh God, I've done it again. 35 times, 32 times, I mean. And the, the engineer was literally calling in his mates from the office saying, come and listen to this, come and listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> I just was dreadful. <laughs> um, that's, that's, yeah, well. It but it's true, really a lot of actors are just working, so. Yeah, well, it just probably, gives the engineer something to do. <laughs> uh, uh, Kendra Christina. And Kendra's wondering, um, and actually this, this goes in well with Estefania Ricalde. So do you have a favorite character and a favorite book? And not necessarily from uh, my stuff, but- uh, Oh, I would always say Artemis. I would always say Artemis. And uh, maybe maybe Butler. Butler is really my favorite. I yeah. adore him. You know, yes. I, there's something about him. He's just- so accent, because He is supposed to be scary and you do get that from that accent. He is, but he but should have been- a heart. But there's a, you know, if you cross the line. But he, he should have been Southern Irish, probably. But I just wanted to do something because his dad, I didn't want to mix him up with his dad's voice. And there was something, I was brought up listening to Ian Paisley. Yeah. And there was something so rough about Ian Paisley every day on the news. Yeah. You know, um, that I sort of incorporated that. And I think that's quite a tough guy. We have a lot of people who wanted to know about um, your favorite characters, the local lemon who calls you the Faldom treasure. To, and to thank you for your amazing narration, we get a lot of that actually. Oh, that's uh, nice. Hannah Keen wants to know: Do you, um, how do you create the accents, and do you run them by anybody, or is that kind of your own? Well, I've had to run a few by you, haven't I? I've had to run a few by you because um, I, I, I wasn't sure what you meant by some of them. Um, and the, the uh, I, I think you know, you, when you've got something like Artemis, you can create, which yeah. is bliss. Uh, I've, I've, I've got such a straight British voice, Queen's English, RP, you know, that is, I, 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 you couldn't get more RP than me, really. Um, so that's how I get cast all the time. And I think in England, in Britain, I've only been given four characters in my whole career where I can be different accents. Yeah. Um, so good at 
I find that so sad that yeah. people don't see outside the box. But just as I was coming into the business, the, the regions were being accepted and and that's fine, you know. You know, yeah. if you get Sean Bean like that and Sean, who sounds like that, Sean Bean. <laughs> He's allowed to do posh English as, as yeah. a Bond or American or Irish or whatever it happens to be, but I'm not allowed to do Sean. Yeah, uh, there's a sort of inverted snobbery there, which is understandable. We've had it our way for years. They all had to do RP. Now it's the other way around. I get it. It's just really sad. Um, so if I can get a, when I get a character like, for instance, Mulch, yeah. Mulch is only ever going to be one character, isn't he? He's only going to be one voice, Mulch, and he really is. And you know, and so he has to be that. Uh, I, I love it. I couldn't stand it. I'll be honest here, couldn't stand it when I saw the movie clip. I haven't seen the whole movie. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. But there was. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm loyal to. I am a loyal Colfer man, and that didn't seem right at all. And so I, I couldn't understand why they couldn't have mulch like that. He just has to be. I'm sure. The, the funny thing is, usually, um, you know, the the actor reads the book and interprets. But after you did the first book. That changed the characters for me, and then oh, I really? started writing with your voice instead of in my, so of my voice. <laughs> Thanks for that. That really helped me a lot. <laughs> well, um, you would have been thrown then when you gave me Opal Cowboy because I was rubbish at Opal Cowboy. <laughs> and I, would, I did. I must admit, I was a bit. I, I have a bit of an impish side, and I would throw in like a Ukrainian. Yeah. Just to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, if only I'd known you love us. So, yeah, look, I know. <laughs> uh, I think I, I mean, one book there was like 14 nationalities. And that's not even. <laughs> that's something here from uh, Thoraker, I think. And it, he, he says to me, I never knew this, and it's that your dad's name was Peter Parker. Is that that's right. Truth? And he said, he wants to know if you're a Spider Man fan. Or, I mean, that's a very, that's kind of off the, off the cuff question. Yeah, he was. He was Sir Peter Parker, though, so he's not quite the same as Spider Man. And. <laughs> But before he was knighted, when, when Spider-Man came out in the, in the comics, my dad, uh, or when my dad became aware of it, I don't know, he used to get, uh, uh, oh, I know, it was when he was, became chairman of British Rail here, and he got a lot of fan mail, and he got some fan mail from kids saying, are you really Spider-Man? And so uh, he used to give these letters to me to respond to, no, oh, my dad is not Spider-Man. <laughs> that's, that's a lovely memory to have, though. Yeah. Um, just incredible asks um, what I just asked you about how to have running character voices by all. And we did that a couple of times, but I mean, I never said, no, that's no, it was always fantastic. Yes, you were very accepting, very accepting. Yeah. And that's very nice of you. Um, I, th I think I, th I think it's it's such a challenge. The, the, one of the great things, I remember when we had to do number one. Yeah, oh the, yeah. The, the character number one. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I'm now interstellar. And so you're going, okay, so what would that sound like? What would somebody from a different bloody planet sound like? <laughs> you've got to do something, you know? And it's sort of whatever oh, comes out at the time. I did not prepare, obviously. You having to do that, I was thinking this is going to drive me up the wall. Yeah. And th there are, there are on, on some books, not yours, because yours are always so different, but there are some books and some characters that I do for other things where I'm allowed to repeat it. Like I've done the series of James Bond, Young James Bond. Yeah, they're fantastic. Um, so, yeah, in I, fact, I, 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 get to be, yeah. I get paid to say my name is Bond, James Bond. Yeah. Not many of us. Um, I wish it was on film, but there you go. Um, yeah, and, but but there's the baddies you get sometimes. I, I worked with a, an amazing actor called Charles Gray, who was in fact a Bond baddie and famously known for stroking the cat. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. And Charles, Charles spoke like that. So there's a certain baddie. Yeah. I can do, and I've done him on, on the Bond book. <laughs> I've done Charles as Bond, as, as, as the baddie with his regular voice. I've done him with a Mexican accent, and I've done him with the Russian as well. <laughs> so <laughs> I just write down, I write down next to the characters I'm doing, Charles Gray, Russian. <laughs> Charles <laughs> Gray. <laughs> I, I knew, so all these foul accents are fine, are being useful in the broader, in your broader. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'll say. Um, yeah. What have you got next? Oh yes, uh, Potter. 6740 wants to know, do you ever break down laughing or... Oh, all the time. Yeah. All the time. Sometimes I break down, uh, I think there's a clip of me online actually in the studio doing voices for something. Um, but yeah, there's, your books are very funny. Oh. And I will often, you know, particularly the latest tr twin books, I found myself, I, I'm sure we spent half an hour longer in that studio than we needed to. 
just from laughing every day. That's um, my cunning plan. Kind of yeah, uh, it's brilliant, and thank God you do, because otherwise it can be quite tiring reading books. About. Well, I, I did it one time, uh, I think I told you, where I tried to do, and they asked me, BBC asked me to do one, and I think they just kind of gave up because it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> just, just been out of the studio. And that was, <laughs> I was in there for two days, and I think, oh no, really? And they were like, my God, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have equity. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> Well, I have worked with one or well, one producer in particular, I won't name him, who um, who didn't get your humour. Oh yeah. And he said, so this is this all seems quite childish. I said, Oh, you wait. <laughs> you wait, buddy. <laughs> I mean, we broke him down by the end of it. He was in good form. But it is like it is kind of an acquired taste. And and I used to be annoyed by that, but then I realized so, someone just said to me, I was giving out complaining, and said, He said, There are people out there who don't like David Bowie. And uh I said, no. okay. I know I'm not comparing myself to David Bowie, and he wasn't comparing me, but he was just. No, 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 no. But I get no, no. I hear you saying that's extraordinary. Imagine like something. And people don't like whatever. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would hope that in every book there's a laugh for you know, everyone. You, no matter who yeah. you are, there's one joke in there. You will oh, like. I think there's. I think yeah. I, I think you write a lot, and I I love it. I have to say, I love well, it. We're going to finish off with a very. We're, we're speaking of childish. Um, my good friend Short Ace 8383 has said that you never struck her as someone bothered by flatulence. I don't know why you would, that would, she would get that impression. But, <laughs> that is a big question. Do I fart? Well, and she, she would actually like to know when was the most recent uh, episode? <laughs> So, okay. During that okay. last, during that last, I'll, last. I'll trump that if you excuse the pun. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll trump that. Not give you the last time I farted, but the next time I'm going to fart. You're gonna. And that'll be later this evening because I've made a, a huge vegan shepherd's pie at home here. And that's got a lot of lentils in it. Whenever I come anywhere near a lentil. There you go. So I would I would get out of that enclosed space if I was you. <laughs> and uh, it's the weirdest question I've ever been asked. <laughs> you know, that's what you get from you know when you're in my world. Uh, and the last no. question she asked is, uh, who would you relate to more? Do you you know do you find yourself relating to anybody in the new series that you can you you, you feel? Like, I know this they're crazy characters, but is there anyone in there who's had an experience that you go oh? I, you know, maybe in the second book, the dad, you know, because he's just so trying to keep his kids safe. I kind of relate to that myself. Um, well, there's Miles. There's wee brother. Miles Beckett, Lance July, and I suppose. In I think I think Beckett is probably the one I, re I, I, I respond to most. Yeah, I think Beckett, I, I recognize more of me in Beckett than I do uh, more than I uh, than I do in his father. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, let's. Uh, but I have that, uh, and uh, I, you created the character for goodness sakes. But I, and as you say, you're impish. But I have that too. I mean, I, I'm known most circles I work in. I'm known as Tigger. Yeah. Oh. I just don't stop bouncing. Perfect. I just yeah. love it. I love I, what I do. I love the world. I mean, at the moment, it's a crazy world. I get that, and even crazier across the big pond I live there. But. Um, I, I just I have so much enthusiasm and, and love uh, to, to, to hand out that I just can't stop bouncing. So probably Beckett, because I love Beckett. And actually, you know, I found myself in the studio going, Beckett, hey, that's it, that's the lovely fella. He's like, yeah, yeah, I adore it, I adore him. <laughs> uh. Well, I think that is a beautiful way to, to end this uh, little Christmas chat. And it'll probably be um, very close to Christmas when this goes out. So uh, really? from me and all the, um, fans who've been adoring your work um, for, for many years. Uh, happy Christmas and lovely to talk to you. Happy Christmas to all of them and mostly to you, Owen. Speak to you soon.